should tie their head up. <laughs> but I think half of, a big part of this is getting their mane wet. Not soap and wet, but damp. I'm using cheesecloth today because uh, I think it's easy to practice with. The start is the most important part. I put my main roll right up in front of the before or where we cut the bridle path. And I take my first piece of hair and I cross my ribbon around it. Then you can find your next piece of hair. And I usually take enough that these two should be the thickness of your main roll. The first two grabs. Yeah. Cross your hair. Willing participant is always nice. <laughs> cross your hair, cross your ribbon. Find a way to keep that tight all the time. If this hand is free, this one should be tight. Now I'm going to switch hands. If this hand is free, this one should be tight. So now I cross my hair right away because the one going up is what I add to. And I usually leave at least a finger gap get my hair from there and make it neat. So now when I curl, I add it to the one going up. So we're still dealing with two pieces of hair. Basically adding it binds that to the neck. Find a way to keep that tight. So there's my next move. I'm, the rest of this is the exact same. I'm going to add to the one going up. You could stand still. Again, okay, so my, when I'm crossing, I that one help. goes up. I make it smooth. And I leave at least a finger width. And find the right hair. And make it smooth. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, if you want some, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Um, She'll be able to go to the TV and watch this at night. Mm -hmm. Or Larry can go to the TV and watch this at night. And right now you're just repeating, right? Once you get the first one down pat, uh -huh. the rest of this is identical. Okay. I mean, with variation, this horse has a little thicker crest, this part of his neck, so I do grab hair from over here when I'm adding. Mm -hmm. The next horse might have a very narrow crest, so you won't have to take hair from there. You can just leave your gap. Add my two together. I give them a twist so this doesn't look like it's frayed hair. And do you always it's add... Split end hair. Call it whatever you want. Do you always add just to one one twist and then the next time you're going to add to the other twist? Sure, because the one going up right now 
was the opposite is this one. of the one that the Next time I go up, this is going to be the one okay. coming up. You're crossing your hair. Pretend it's always just two pieces of hair, because it really is. Uh-huh. Cross your hair. Now this is the one going up. Okay. And if you have to, just play with this like, enough to find the right amount. There it is. Okay. And your fingers will eventually memorize it. Oh, yep, that's the right amount. Just keep going. It seems like something you practice for a while, then it just becomes like muscle memory. Just yeah, like you just should weave, be able to like boom, 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 have boom, a boom. visit with your neighbor while mm -hmm. you're braiding to me. Yeah. Or the camera guy. <laughs> yeah. And this isn't like, okay, the reason this is looks easy to me, because I've done so much of it for one, but I'm really not exerting a lot of, like I'm not pulling anything really hard. Mm -hmm. It's Everything if you can get if you can get this always held tight. When this hand's free, this one's just pinching this tight, right? So now when I switch hands, this is pinching that tight. I'm not really working that hard at it. Okay, everyone does this different too, but I like to. It, it gives you good practice. So when, if you think this is where you're going to end your braid, which it should be about here for his collar. However, we're going to stop here. I take, don't grab any more hair from here. And it's the same technique all the way down. Cross your hair, cross your rib. Find a way to keep this tight. This hand's going to be loose. Cross your hair, cross your rib. Tight. Cross your hair, cross your rib. Cross your hair, cross your rib. So you still have that block braid, your four strand braid, going down. I'm going to finish it out. And I like the cheesecloth for learning because it isn't always perfect. Like I should have pulled that just a hair tighter. The other main rolls are very forgiving. Cheesecloth isn't, it makes you better. If you make mistakes, it makes you better. So then when you're done, I'm run out of hair, right? So I'll just take the one end and just put a knot right where that last braid is. But you see the block braid? Mm -hmm. And I like to finish that way so when you lay it over their mane, it still looks pretty going down. So you use cheesecloth uh, just for to, practice to purposely increase the difficulty. Well, pretty much, it's nice to work with with your hands. Uh -huh. One, that's why it's good for learning, but it also teaches you to make these very symmetrical. Like these braids should all be the same. Bulbs should be the same size all the way down. Same as your hair. I'm off a little bit there, but that's only yeah, long story. But <laughs> symmetrical is huge. That perfect picture that mm -hmm. I keep trying to tell everybody. That's what it's supposed to be.